Okay, so I thought I'd make a short video today about getting more out of Meshtastic. So the chances are you've bought a node, you've got your uh, found a portable antenna that is hopefully actually resonant at the 868 megahertz or 433 megahertz, if that's what you choose to work with, and you made a few local contacts. But inevitably you get hungry to make more. So it's probably hanging on a USB power supply powered up all the time hopefully and sitting on a windowsill but you want more so let's have a look at growing your mesh organically and how to get the best out of it so the first is probably to uh, fit a battery so I fitted in mine a little 1000 milliamp hours I wish they wouldn't do that electronics engineers when it gets to a thousand they round it down so it's one amp hour it's just the Chinese that make it sound really impressive. It's 20,000 milliamp hours. No, it's not. It's 20 amp hours, if you're lucky. Anyway, got some of these batteries. One of them's rubbish. This one is not too bad. I've just been out in the car and done a little range test with it and checking the battery life, really. I've been out for about an hour and it's dropped about 10%, which isn't too bad. So, you fitted a battery. Uh, you could have a typical 1,000 milliamp power or you could go a bit to the net if the case allows it you could go to a 3000 milliamp hour or 3 amp power cell they're not much dearer to be honest and apart from you probably have to provide a battery holder for it but that should give you substantial more battery time I can't stress enough though if you want to make contacts and see who is around you you need to leave your node on 24-7 I'm not really talking about the battery powered ones, but uh, we'll discuss those more in a minute. But the more you leave your node on, the more contacts you will attract. Because it's only sending a signal out every 15 minutes or whatever to see who's around it. So if you turn it on and go, there's nobody on, and turn it off again, you'll never make any contacts. And I've proven this time and time again. Sometimes, even after you've made a firmware update, you're going to have to leave it on for quite a while. I just leave them on 24-7, just disable the notifications on, on your phone or put your phone in do not disturb mode if it's getting on your nerves. Uh, I just let people know that you're, you're alive, you're active. So the, other, the next thing you want to look at is what antenna you're using. And the chances are you're using one of those little coil twig little things that's on the end of a bit of wire. Uh, they're, they're okay, you know, I mean, I made my first contacts on them, the same as anybody else. But it's very rapidly, you want to get onto uh, something better, and for under 10 quid, you can get one of these. Um, what you want to look out for on an antenna is that it states A68 megahertz or whatever your frequency is in your location. If it has a range of frequencies, it's likely going to be useless. If it says it covers 800 to 900... 50 megahertz, that's not a tuned antenna. It's not resonant at the required frequency. I'll pull the graph up and show you one after, hopefully. So that's the first upgrade, and that's what I'm using on my mobile node at the moment. And indeed, it's what I did use on my base station initially. I'll come to base stations in a minute. What you do have to be careful of is that you've got the right male or female connector. Uh, you can see the inset on that one that shows it is male. Now there's sort of male plugs and male sockets, so you have to be careful. And sometimes you need a little adapter. I managed to buy a female one with a female to female adapter. And I'm surprised it didn't blow my radio up. But for a couple of days I was off offline and I couldn't work out what was going wrong. I bought a second antenna for an another node. And that was the right polarity, polarity, the right gender, whatever you want to call it. And that improved things dramatically. So when you get your connector from IPX to SMA, make sure it matches what your antenna is. It's really important. And um, it didn't help that mine came with an adapter and I didn't bother to remove it and check. And it was a female adapter going into a female socket. No contact at all. Nothing going to happen there. So make sure your IPX connectors are the right way around. 
These can be quite cramped, uh, fitting them into the lid as well. As you can see there, that, that antenna cable is going round. Oops, that's not it. I haven't got a shot of that, but the, the antenna cable is going all the way around the Heltec board display and then back onto the IPX connector. These things are far too long. You know, the shortest you can get is like 15 centimetres or 6 inches. It's not ideal. And then if you're going to mount the socket into the uh, case, uh, that's tricky as well. Often there isn't enough depth to mount it anywhere except at this end. And I did find that if you mount it in the middle, like that, it won't balance, it falls over. So what you want to do is mount it as low as possible. I did think of mounting it on the end, but I didn't think there was enough depth to cope with it because this part here is quite rigid, it shouldn't be bent. So if you could mount it on the top it would be better, but there's, on this particular case there's webbing. I didn't want to destroy all the webbing. I did drill the hole out big enough to accept it, but it wasn't going to have, have the socket side of it, the actual nut is too big, so that's not good either. So you want more. So the next stage of mesh testing Nirvana is to buy a second node. You might want to stay with the same brand such as Haltech Lilligo. Or if you want to get a lower power consumption for a mobile node, you may choose to move one of them up to something like a RAP whiz block. Something that's powered with an NRF52 chipset, it's going to use a lot less power and your battery consumption will be a lot less. So that's something to consider. The other thing you might want to consider is adding a loft antenna or outdoor antenna. I'm personally using one of these. Now, I'm, I'm not making any claims about it, but it works, you know. It's allegedly 8 decibels gain. ADBI just means it's the amount of gain over an isotropic source. What's an isotropic source? Well, basically one of these. They don't really have much gain. This might have 3 dB of gain if you're lucky. But an isotropic source is just a piece of wire. And it has the same gain all the way around it, but it doesn't have any gain. It's sort of the worst case scenario of just having one element. These have two elements, these, these ones, that are dipole inside. And that's how they claim 3 dB or 5 dB gain on a lot of them. And take a bit of it with a pinch of salt. The reason that this one is 8 dB gain is it's got multiple dipoles stacked within it. It's what's called a stacked array. And that's the next step up. And mine, mine is hanging on the gutter in the conservatory. And it does help me to get out a considerable distance. Also, ensure you have the latest stable firmware unloaded, unloaded, uploaded on all your boards. Are you familiar with using it before these nodes end up in inaccessible places? Because there's no good upgrading the firmware and then finding out that you can't get the settings the way you want them. So, if you ever allocate one of your two nodes to be a base station with an external antenna, it's then going to serve multiple purposes. Why is that? So you can relay from your mobile node out in the garden or maybe within a couple of miles of your, your house or your home location, wherever your base station is, and it'll relay your signals out and vice versa. So you'll be able to utilise the base station when you're not at home. Great. You'll also be relaying other people's signals. And that is really good because that's going to dramatically increase the number of stations that you can contact. And because it's a base station and hopefully on 24-7, even if your mobile node isn't on, it's going to maintain this network. After all, Mestastic is a peer-to-peer -peer network. Nobody's in charge, nobody has a higher hierarchy in it. We're all just the same and we're all relaying each other's signals. So the more we can do that, the more we're going to have a guaranteed connection point so that you can walk or drive down the road and see if how far you can connect to it. One step further. You mean there's more? Well, if you have a preference for uh, improving coverage in a particular direction, the solution is a Yagi antenna. What's a Yagi? It's a TV-style aerial with multiple elements. 
Now technically a two element one is a Yagi. But where Yagi's come into their strength is when you have a number of elements like a TV aerial, which are typically 13 to 17, and each element adds gain. But in addition to adding gain, it narrows the directionality of it. Now that can be a good thing and a bad thing. If you need to hit a repeater or an, another base station on top of a hill, eight miles away, that could be a very positive thing. But it will then restrict you picking up more local people in other directions. So you then may want to consider a third node and have one of those on one node or maybe something less severe. And the, the thing about this one is it's also great for portable use. That's not too directional, but it's still giving you 9.5 decibel gain. So that's, that's a benefit as well. So you could have two base stations, one working into an isotropic aerial, or a normally directional aerial, and one working into a Yagi of that type, or that type, or anything in between. You can get ones with even less elements that are less directional. So that will give you the maximum advantage with three nodes. Can you take it further? You can always go more with radio. You know, this is why I'm as a radio guy spend tens of thousands of pounds on kit. It's because you can achieve more always. How do you achieve godlike status in Meshtastic land? Well, the ultimate for you and maybe family of mates is to install the repeater at a works location that's really elevated or in a field or at the top of a hill that you legally have access to. That's your decision. If you decide to ignore le legality, you'll want to obscure the location and hide it and hide the device so that they don't get stolen. Because you might have a tiny little node in a tree and then it's got a massive solar panel keeping it charged up. I've seen this working in other countries. And yeah, you know, if you're in some remote place like Australia, then you're going to find that, you know, you're on some farmland somewhere and you need to relay it up a hill to get into the next village. You know, uh, probably nobody ever goes down those paths and you'll get away with it. But don't put more expensive kit up that you're not prepared to lose. I do have, you know, if you've got friends who own uh, property and neighbours and they're willing to let you have a node on there, then that's going to go a long way. So we keep hearing it's going to be wonderful in emergencies. And just a footnote from my personal experiences. And bear in mind, I'm, I'm a licensed radio amateur as well. And they do have an organised network and repeaters. It's called Raynet. And they do a wonderful job of rescuing people off mountains and falling into rivers or whatever, or having car accidents in obscure places. They do have a network of VHF and UHF repeaters, which, you know, helps their network. I still think that we are a long way from reliable SHTF or shit, it's the fan emergency communications but as it grows it will get better but as long as we get better if we all collaborate together and we share our resources a little and we keep the damn things turned on so i hope this inspires you and at least gives you a path that you want to follow as you get more involved with mestastic and each stage of this get, carries more and more rewards in terms of contacting people you'll find you, some of them become regular contacts I've said it before, you can, don't feel free to ask anybody for advice, both on Meshtastic, uh, my Facebook group, which is East, East Midlands Meshtastic UK. On Reddit, on Reddit, I've got East Midlands UK as well. I've got a Discord server for Meshtastic UK. Now, it's not the only Meshtastic UK, but mine is about hardware and software and supporting each other and it has regionalised channels. In fact, I can bring it up. So, Meshtastic UK, we've got show your kit and location. We've got tech tips and issues. And then we've got all these regional areas that people are getting involved in. And there's some good discussions going on on these. And it has really helped this group to build up. There's people showing off the kits, what they're picking up. So please do get involved. I'd never used Discord before, even though I've been a member of it for a while. It can be a great channel and it's advert free, so a lot of people ask me to do this purely for this reason. 
big shout out too to, to Matt. So Matt gave me quite a few tips to help me get this started. So big shout out to him. That's my Mistastic UK channel. You can spot by the Plagiarised Union Jack. And then there's also a Mistastic channel as well. So that's a worldwide channel. So you can get some really good resources. It's not about you just following what I do. It's about helping people to find the information. So I hope you found this useful. And if you have any questions, post them in the comments on here. I'll post links to uh, the channels that I can or I'll list them in the description and then you'll be able to find them. So yeah, help each other and I'll help you and I'll keep making videos. So let's all go. Oh, and another thing is if you're not in the East Midlands area, in the East Midlands area I run a net on Mestastic 8pm every Thursday night. Uh, this will be the third week it's run. Sometimes it's busy, sometimes it's not. Now, my idea is not just for this to be in the East Midlands. I post it to other groups and suggest that they do the same. If you want to find people to talk to, that net is the best way of doing it. The amateur radio guys have been doing this for years. It helps people to improve their confidence of talking online. It gives them a time and a place where they can go on and know there's somebody to talk to. And we can build it from there. So it's not about me. It's about having a time and a place and please contact your local groups and suggest they have a, a, a net. And if we all do it at 8pm on a Thursday, which is the time, you know, most people are looking forward to the weekend, but they're probably at home twiddling their thumbs or watching EastEnders. Why not get a net going and just spend an hour seeing who's on and seeing what the capability of Meshtastic really is. And we had like 30 or 40 people on one night when I did it. So it definitely can work. So please post that into your local groups and suggest that they do it. I think it's a good idea and I hope that you do too. So thanks very much for listening and watching. Give me your tips, give me your ideas. It's one of those subjects that's a science basically. There's a lot to learn. And you know, even with a couple of years in amateur radio, certainly don't know it all. And a lot of other people are very experienced at it. mestastic has been around for at least two, two and a half years. And it's only by watching some of the older videos that I, I've learned the issues that the initial people had setting it up and getting it working. So please keep in touch. And thanks very much for watching.